I am on a quest to understand and master high-level mathematics. I tried university to get this done, but it wasn't the answer. And so I've left it to venture out on my own to find the knowledge I desire. Self-educating. Using whatever resources I can find. Documenting my journey as I go in order to help you in yours. The mountain is high and the path is long. So let's get to climbing. Today is a very special day. I'm excited. You should be excited too, because today is the first day that we're doing an actual math video on this channel. I'm going to be going over my method for approaching textbooks. Get a whiteboard. We're going to do a whole presentation. It's going to be spectacular. Doing dedicated math videos is difficult. To make it interesting is quite challenging, and I'm going to try my best to do that. So let us get to the library. Hailstorm just opened up. Holy shit. Bingo. Let's get tropical. Okay, so we have secured an empty classroom. If you notice I'm wearing different clothes, this is actually tomorrow because I got bored last night, didn't really feel like making the video, so I just pushed it off till today. So it is now the next day. It is like nine o'clock. Let's do some fucking mathematics, boys. Okay, now full disclosure, I did a practice run because I don't want to fill up my SD card with a bunch of nonsense. So uh, that's that, get a mental image of that. I'm gonna erase it, draw it again. Let's see, there's some nodes, there's some lines, axioms, theorems, proofs. Don't worry about it too much, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, this is my first time ever doing a presentation from the front, in front of the whiteboard. So uh, there's gonna be many more to come. Give me a break though, come on, first time. Also, using, uh, using chalk, I'd honestly never really used a chalkboard before. One of the most satisfying experiences I've ever had in my life, it's like, it's just, a whiteboard doesn't even come close. Like that, chalk's the way to go, man. I don't know why we switched to whiteboards, they suck. Listen to that click. It just makes you feel smart. This is a mental model I hold in my mind whenever I'm trying to learn mathematics from a textbook. It's something that is actually quite obvious to the mathematician that is operating. It's a very simple model, which is why it's so effective. But most mathematicians wouldn't even say this is something worth speaking about. It's just like an obvious structure that exists. But to be totally honest with you, it has helped me tremendously once I kind of stumbled upon this. And now that it's like clearly in my head, whenever I pick up a math textbook, I'm trying to fill in this template. Keep this model in mind whenever you're approaching a math textbook. So every mathematical system, it starts out as kind of a big jumble of, of crap going on. So calculus, at the beginning of it, it wasn't cognitively organized in such a neat way. Newton, Leibniz, a bunch of people come up with these complex things, these ideas, they're kind of jumbled. They're saying, okay, there's some curves going on. There's some slopes. There's some areas under the curve, bunch of stuff. It's jumbled. I'm just, I just want to, I want to put in your head the image of like this jumbled weird mess. It's like a big a shed. This is literally the image that pops in my head is that you're, you're looking at a shed and it's got like nails sticking out. There's, there's two by fours everywhere. It's a complicated shed, a lot of stuff happening, but it's very difficult to, to grasp. There's a lot of stuff happening. You can kind of see the full thing. It's a shed, but we're trying to make it more logical. So then over time, people rebuild that shed. They say, okay, how do we make this shed so it's less bumpy? and stuff sticking out everywhere. How do you make it just a nice, clean shed? And the clean shed, not the complicated shed, is this. So the axiomatic method is something that comes up all the time in math. For me at least, it took a long time to understand that this is the way pretty much every math book is orientated. In any mathematical system, you pick up a math textbook that's a little high level, what you're gonna have are axioms. 
So these are truths that we accept as fundamental. View them as the, the two by four and the nails from which you build a house. They're the simple building blocks and they're the most simple we can find. So in a mathematical system, they're just assertions. So let's, let's come up with some arbitrary system. Let's say this axiom says all dogs are red. This axiom says Rick has a dog. Um, honestly, that's all I need for my example. Pretend these say some arbitrary shit, doesn't really matter. But they're just axioms, they're truths that we're just gonna say, okay, we're gonna assume this. From these things, what can we deduce? If these things are true, we're just gonna pretend that they're true. We don't know, but we're just gonna pretend that we, we're just gonna accept that these things are true. From that, what can we deduce? So we're just assuming these are true. What conclusions can we come to from if we just accept these are true, just hypothetically? From there, somebody comes along, say Jimbo. Jimbo comes along, he says, okay, I'm gonna make the assertion because this one says, uh, what does this one say? All dogs are red. I'm gonna write that down actually. I don't know if you can read that. It says dogs are red. Okay, so some dude comes along, he says, okay, I'm gonna pause it, I'm just gonna pause it. Without proof, I'm just gonna pause it. I'm gonna pause it that. I'm just pausing it. So that, that's just something he's, he's looking at the axiom and saying, I have a theorem. I'm gonna say that Rick's dog is red. Based on what I can see, I'm gonna say Rick's dog is red. Now, as of right now, we haven't provided any proof. He's just saying Rick's dog is red. We don't know for sure that Rick's dog is red. So this is, this is a theorem. This is a theorem right now, an unproved theorem, because we haven't, we haven't proven it, we haven't provided any proof. And this is where it really, really helps. These three concepts all kind of come together. So we're trying to prove this from our axioms. And what we do is we draw lines from these axioms to prove theorems. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and provide a, a simple proof for this. I'm gonna say, because all dogs are red and Rich has a dog, we can conclude, based on our simple rules of logic, we can conclude for sure, 100% certainty that Rick's dog is in fact red. And so now we can consider this a proven theorem. And that is literally all of mathematics wrapped up in a very simple system. Now these get super hairy, I'm telling you. Talk about abstract algebra, these axioms are super annoying. I kind of hate it. I'm trying to find a different way to approach it. There'll be like some weird axiom that doesn't really make much sense. It's all very heady. But at the end of the day, this is what you're doing. So do not get dismayed, this is what's happening. And so, so you pick up the math textbook, you're saying, okay, what in the fuck am I looking at? A lot of weird symbols, what's happening here? There's a bunch of stuff I don't understand. There's a bunch of stuff being introduced. Theorems, axioms, dilemmas, what the hell? Just remember this system and you'll be all right. So you're trying to fill in what the axioms are. So in any system, you're trying to say, okay, you read the book and say, well, what are the axioms? What are they stating without proof? Sometimes these are very difficult to navigate. They don't hold your hand, which I, I wish they did, but they don't. So you're asking yourself, what are the axioms? You try to fill in these nodes first. Try to say, what are they just assuming that we're building up from? Also conceptualize attack in a math textbook as an attack. It's a war, you're fighting, it's difficult. Think of it like climbing a mountain, it's very difficult. In the textbook, they're gonna be developing some more theorems. They're gonna say, from these things, this is true. And then from, from maybe me combine these two. And then maybe all of these three. <laughs> boom, make another theorem. So these are all theorems going on. I mean, I mean, you can have like a bunch more theorems. Typically it just kind of explodes out from a few axioms. It's like a fractal, I guess. It's just all over. So these are the theorems, proofs, Axioms. Those are all you need to know. And then as you course through the book, it's gonna start usually at the axioms. Then it's gonna go, it's gonna say theorem, proof. So if you pick up a book, it's gonna say theorem, proof of that theorem. And to prove the theorem, you're allowed to use anything that was proven before it. Now, sometimes books will even go towards stuff that wasn't even proven or posited in that book. They'll use some truth that was from a previous textbook or something that you should have known coming up to it. I'm telling you, it gets hard. <laughs> Math is hard, you gotta like remember a bunch of stuff. There's these weird, uh, weird uh, theorems that come up all the time in certain fields you have to like remember, go back to, but just remember the system and you'll be all right and you won't be lost completely. At least you have some sort of flashlight in the dark. But I'm telling you, I went without this and it was very difficult. I'm still completely on this journey. It's super difficult. This is the most important thing I've found. Okay, so then eventually you start first layer of theorems and then eventually you're not actually going back down to the axiom anymore. Later in the book you go, if this theorem's true and this theorem's true, then this theorem, actually hold on, I should write this. The book will say, okay, here's this theorem. And then it'll draw on these two already proven theorems because these are already true. We've proven they're true from the axioms. So then we're gonna prove this from these two. We're gonna say these two are trues. How do we prove this thing? And then we'll do another layer over here, theorems, and these will draw on, I don't know, like that, and then that will go over there, and maybe that one follows directly from this, 
and then boom, boom, and then it's just gonna keep going up and up and up, and then pretty soon Bob's your uncle and you have a mathematical system. That's pretty much all for the day. I'm gonna be going over this system again in the future once I have better presentation methods. I just figured I should start now because A, this is like the most important thing I've found from my self-education journey. Secondly, I had to get something up mathematical related because we're on video number 12 now. A lot of it's just been fucking around. Just stare at this for a sec. I'll get out of your way. I only got 12 minutes recording. Mathematics, boys. I'm gonna try doing a uh, jumping transition to my house. Alright, all that talking about mathematics got me fired up to read, so I'm gonna read until library closes, which is in about like half hours. So I can't do a time lapse because I got like 10% left on my battery, but uh, I'm reading. The library is now closed. Good night. You saw me turn that on, that was like perfect timing. I have like 4% left, so I might not even be able to film myself getting in the car, but I'm going home doing the outro. Thank you.